Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Nexus Games Europe Playoff Phase number two with semifinals around the corner and later on to be followed by the grand final. Right now, it is Sweden waiting for their next opponents here. It's going to be Poland or Team Germany is currently tied 1-1. What a, what a fun series to watch up to this point, right? It has. We've seen Team Germany able to pull off a nice little comp with a blow-up potential that obviously hooked Emerald Wind and Gust combo from a yep. very long time ago, but it still works. And then we saw something that was against the Geneva Convention, where Poland just ran over Germany on practice. <laughs> yeah. Definitely true. Now, I'm trying to beat the speed run of practice. Game from practice. <laughs> <laughs> well, they didn't include Savannah, so the Chinese record on that battle ground <laughs> is yet to be broken. Uh, for now, though, guys, we're going to take a look at the map vetoes for all of you guys who tuned in a little bit later, or for those of you who forgot which battlegrounds were banned and picked already. Now, Germany, they entered the series banning Tomb of the Spider Queen. Poland immediately followed with Black Hearts Bay. Dragonshire was picked, and the Black Hearts Bay ban, I think, is going to be very crucial. We should probably highlight that again, because Germany is known to be... Pretty, pretty fond of those wonky battlegrounds. Yeah, they are quite tricky. Even though the time that they actually picked it, they very nearly lost. They very <laughs> nearly lost that game, and it was only in the late game that they were able to make the comeback on it. But still, Poland not wanting to play it. Bakery, what battleground do you think are we going to see here? I think, I think Team Germany is going to want to head back to something a bit less standard, a bit more wacky. So let's say Haunted Mines. Mines or Warhead? Ah, uh, we're gonna go to a nice purple background here in the ESL studios in Leicester. We're gonna go to Cursed Hollow. And uh, Germany actually picked that battleground. It's pretty ah. surprising, isn't it? Hmm. Germany trying to turn over a new leaf, perhaps? Trying to bring something uh, a little bit more standard, it seems. I mean, we could still see something like the infamous Morales backdoor Medivac strategy on okay, first hollow. Yeah, sure. That is definitely a, a possibility. There's always some kind of cheese and You can available. always put something out. <laughs> I mean, we could also see double global, triple global, stuff like that. This is obviously a fantastic battleground for the Stitches Bright Wing Force oh, that yes. combination. They wanted to bring it back. Tassadar is a remove by Team Poland, wanting to once again try and nerf that tracer. Was not that effective in the last game, but it can be effective if you leave it unchecked and a big deal, something that was a big impact in the last game. ETC removed by Germany. Poland not letting us rest with Habitha. And I think Zadun on that ETC looked way more impactful than in game one because he managed to go for stage oh, dive. Oh, okay. okay oh, so, uh, what bakery? are some of the key parts of the combo, Bakery? Are we talking the Medivac backdoor? The Juice no, Pirates. Yeah. The Juice Pirates. Well, I mean, Terio, I'd say, is one of the key ones. Um, yeah. Brightwing, maybe? Brightwing's quite good as well, because once you get onto the core, you can obviously yeah. use the Emerald Wind. Um, Brightwing, I mean, maybe not maybe not first pick worthy if you that comp. It might be good for hiding, in general. Yeah, like, that's If you pick Morales straight away, then it's quite, oh, I think I know what they're doing. But in this case, Brightwing is... It gives them the flexibility to go into something a little bit more, uh, a bit more standard, and it might be something they want to do standard-wise due to the fact that Abatha has mule. So if their push fails, it can become a huge problem. Yeah, absolutely. And also, we have to keep in mind that Terio and Brightwing, the two big impact that both of those heroes have is boss control. Oh yes. So that might be instead what they're looking for. What yeah. baffles me up to this point and surprises me is the fact that how quickly Team Germany and Team Poland are locking in their heroes. This yeah. seems to be a really precise battle, battle plan laid out for both teams. So we see Greymane and Genji. Now the idea here is, for starters, these are great heroes and perfect Abathur copy targets. The other thing is, Greymane is really good at fast pushing. He would have been perfect if this was a Juice Pirates build for Germany. Exactly, but what I want to highlight is just how aggressive this comp is from Poland. Yeah. We do not very often see Genzi and Gremin together because they are both fulfilling a very similar role in those team fights, and to pick them both is so aggressive. Into yeah. the Emerald Wind, into the Sanctification on top of that. Exactly, if you can get your damage off, then much like the letters of their names, it is GG, but if you can't, then it's a serious issue if Sanctification is dropped or if Brightwing lands a solid Polymorph. But remember, there's also going to be a third G in there in the form of whatever Abatha decides to copy, as Uther is banned out here. 
All right, taking a little bit of support momentum away, the Divine Shield, if either put yep. on Raymond or the Genji, <laughs> becomes very dangerous with the Abathur on top of that. Now, looks like Poland has gained a lot of ground here. The community yeah. votes down at the bottom of the screen. 63 have turned their favor and said, nope, Germany, after that game number two, we do not support you anymore. <laughs> but of course, you can still have an impact on that as well, guys, in the chat. Hashtag PL win if you think Poland is going to go on a 2-1 lead. And if you think Germany, that was just a setback, they will come back as strong as they looked in game one. Hashtag DE win. We see Poland taking a while for their consideration here. Now, they suspected Drew's Pirates Morales is the obvious ban, but if it's not Drew's Pirates, then Morales is quite a weird ban in general. So what would be good? Arthas is a bit good if they wanted to go for a more standard draft. Arthas on a sanctification is terrifying. Yeah, Arthas are very strong against most melee assassins, which makes me think, are they going even more aggressive? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but I would guess probably not looking at a melee assassin. I mean, if that was the case, they'd I mean, be you, no you need support, a support or, no or tank. tank. Exactly. What if their, uh, their tank was a melee assassin? Uh, Not your solo tank. Oh, Tannis solo tank. One of the two. Something a bit silly at the end there. There was one comp that used to be very strong in Cursed Hollow. It's involved in Illidan's solo tank. Oh, yeah. Um, I think I remember this. Yeah, no, that's that's quite a cheesy composition, but also <laughs> very strong. So hey. Poland might be looking for something a bit weird like oh, that. Maybe. That's Germany. This is going to shed a lot of light on what kind of comp they want to go for. Or is standard boss control? which is starting to look a little bit more likely once again with Gul'dan and Leoric coming in here. Leoric, a very strong hero against Abatha. They're going to look to use that global presence, um, or sorry, that counter global presence in the form of wave clear and fast rotations between lanes. Definitely true. His pushing uh, potential should not be underestimated. Leoric's that is. The Deuce Pirate's dream begins to sail into the sunset as Gul'dan, he does have an incredible amount of damage output, especially all three corruptions land on a building, but it's not the racing kind of style you want so far with this comp, so very unlikely we'll see it now. Definitely a more late game building exactly. pressure. The interesting thing for me, actually, is the more I consider it, the more I think the Tyrael Brightwing might have just been an instant lock that makes Poland think something weird is going on, yeah. when in reality it isn't. Um, in which case, Poland have kept their patience very well and kept very calm. I was going to say, did Poland really fall for it? Because if you take a look at their aggressive route they have chosen for this draft, they really seem to be willing to take the aggression yeah. towards their enemies instead of vice versa. And even more aggression, yep. maximum uh, maximum dash potential with Karazim, of course, with his Radiant Dash, and Anubrak with that Burrow Charge, but pressure onto that Gulf Dash. If you ask me, what's the absolute most aggressive composition you can <laughs> think of, it's probably the five heroes on the left-hand side of your screen right now. Would you replace a new back of ETC, maybe? Or is a new back no, of No, I think a new back more aggressive, yeah. I like it. I mean, right now, there's only one support available inside of Team Germany. If Cocoon lands on exactly that hero, preventing the Emerald Wind as well, yeah. there's not a whole lot they can do to really stop the Polish onslaught. So we've seen Gul'dan can be a solo damage dealer pretty consistently. So there's a good chance we're going to see a second support here to try and do this. but. Who else is available in terms of disengage or zoning? They've already banned out Uther, who would have been a great survivability hero for them. Do they need someone to keep Brightwing safe? Like a secondary support? Do you think she's fine all by herself? I mean, I'm looking right now, and I was just about to say, Twilight Dream against this kind of comp, if it doesn't get interrupted, would just be potentially game-changing. You throw in all the things that can deal with that hard engage. If everyone jumps in, you have Sank. Gives you turnaround potential. Yeah. Emerald Wind, disengage potential. Horrify and Twilight Dream. Even March of the Black King if you are able to get some lucky moves in there with the Yorick. Germany have a really good comp in terms of actually dealing with this. Germany have a lot of tools that they can use to deal with this aggressive composition, just as you mentioned. Emerald Wind, I'd say, is the biggest one. And they definitely don't want that interrupted. But Horrify, that is... Insane that could potentially be multiple members of Poland going down in yeah. the same instant, as well as Twilight Dream. And I think the battleground also favors the defensive playstyle by Team Germany a little bit, at least, because it's not like on Warhead Junction where you have multiple angles, wide areas to really engage upon. On no, the engage from Poland is always go mo mostly coming from one direction, so it's not really too hard to land your spells on multiple people. You might think initially that it does all come from uh, one direction, but you have to remember 
it, this is all depends on how Poland set up. So let's yeah. say there is a tribute. Let's say they decide, let's not go for the tribute. Let's just push with Greymane and Karazim top instead. Stuff like that will actually force Germany to respond to Poland, which will give them those flanking opportunities. Poland also have immense global potential, uh, not global potential, but ability potential, which means they can really be attacking from any angle a lot of the time. Right, who's going to take this game? My vote's on Poland. I the burn of execution, I think, is probably with Germany here in terms of they have Slanish defensive abilities, but if they can do it, which they prove they possibly can, I'm leaning for Germany. All right, I'm also leaning for Germany. As Tetra said, it all comes down to the execution, to the timing of their high-impact rogue abilities. Will they be able to pull it up? We're about to see. Let's find out as we head into game number three with Mana playing for Team Poland on the Grey Main, Zadun on the Anubarak, Zhuf playing the Karazim, playing that Abatha is going to be Wolfs, and the Genji is played by Gugas. And Germany currently down, uh, currently tied, excuse me, 1 1 are being represented by Minx on the gold and Memecraft on that Malfurion in the middle, or excuse me, in the top lane. We have Nuni on that right wing, Brain plays Leoric, and last but not least, Morn on that Tyrael. Immediate aggression into the top lane, very nearly catching Brain, but of course he's Leoric, very unlikely he would have been in any particular danger, but uh, a show of what's to come coming in here from Poland. Exactly. Once you let your guard down, even for just a second, the Polish team is going to punish you yeah. mercilessly with all that aggression and the lockdown they have available. Now, in terms of wave clear, actually, there's not a whole lot for them to really be brought to the table, especially with Abathur in the early game struggling a little bit when it comes to providing global pressure. Whereas the wave clear from Team Germany is pretty good. Leoric, crazy good wave clear in general. We have a fell flame build, which is currently destroyed destroying the bot yeah. lane with currently no one in it. So good on having slight issues in terms of stacking. Tyrael, not the worst in terms of wave clear himself. Mapurian, one of the best supports wave clear. And Brightwing, taking a little bit of a wave clear talent, going with the dream shots, the cooldown reduction, and the extra range of arcane flare, allowing her to get good poke damage. And like you see there, help clear the waves a little. Strong damage onto Rain here. He has to use the healing fountain up to this point, but they're now reinforced by another member of Team Poland. Appler is basically left going? to serve two lanes, and four people are trying to go for first blood. As they get onto Brain and take him down, also grabbing the tower, Nunia realizes he does no longer want to be here. And as such, <laughs> we will now see the fort begin to be pressured. So right now it is bot fort being pressured by Team Germany and top fort being Hold that pressured a kill potential onto Nunia here as he flees. Can he get the teleport in time? No, he can't. Nunia thought he was safe all the way behind the fort, but guess what? Not only were minions here, but even if the minions had been there, Anubarak's beetles can intercept aggro from yep. forts and towers, so the damage onto those Polish heroes would have been very much reduced. So the fort race very much won here by Team Poland with Abbott, oh, like yeah. Tim, soaking two lanes. He's body soaking mid, which Tyrael is pushing up a little. Now this does actually give Abatha better XP because the lane is pushed up because that means Abathur's body will be in range for soaking, but it also means that mid is a little bit weaker, so those bruiser camps will potentially be more impactful. As we see, the solo camper, solo mercenary taker in the form of the Gul'dan, less than usual, but he is getting <laughs> yeah. help now. Definitely true. Uh, Malfurion is a real bro and helps the Gul'dan out. As you said, he lacks a little bit of uh, solo single target damage, but as long as there's memecraft to help him out, he's going to be fine and dandy. Speaking of fine and dandy, most of the players now teleported back to rejuvenate their mana and health bars yeah. to come back in good shape here. Now, the longer the Polish team can stall out this tribute and basically buy time for Abathur to soak, the more value they're going to get from the gold. Genji. Moving forward, the Brute is Boost. landed, and it does hit Gugas a little bit as he takes a lot of damage, even getting polymorphed here. You see the extra damage onto him coming from that unstable anomaly and the snipe by the Dream Shop. Right wing, G is making a statement of Genji. We will have none of your shenanigans here. And Germany, despite being behind the next beat, pick up the first tribute. Definitely true. I really have to highlight Minx's aim there as well on the corruption, yeah. hitting absolutely everything with those abilities onto Gugas. And Gugas probably got a little bit too overzealous here. He probably overestimated the amount of protection Karazim and uh, Abathur were capable of doing. Yeah, even with Life Ally, that yeah. corruption does kind of junk. 
even with a fell flame build so you gotta be careful as we do see germany moving on to the mercenary camp now once again as we said for that fight poland were a significant amount ahead next to they still are quite a bit ahead in terms of xp because that bot fort was never actually killed that germany were not able to get that pushing potential to the extreme very true i mean in terms of raw experience gain team poland has done a wonderful job to really maintain a strong lead especially with an abathur which is the biggest weakness of his uh of his kit like giving up early structures giving up early tributes but for now you know that one lost team fight doesn't really mean the end of the world we're going to take a look at Turiel's build here as well we see salvation coming in at level seven i think that is the cooldown uh reduction I, it, it could be it could be the damage as well but i think it's the more defensive round uh, no, it is Reciprocate, so my bad. It is yep. the damage upon the shield yeah, break. Not going for the Zealot tree yeah. here, so yeah, the Reciprocate, like you said. Getting in that uh, explosion shield. Yeah. It's good for wave clear. It's good yeah. for team fights as well if you really seek to do it to deliver a little bit of AoE damage. It's a potential bait into a judgment. I mean, sure. As we see the first damage onto Minx as he gets cleansed out, trying to survive, but he gets first, and that's the comp we want to see from Poland, but their health bar is starting to drop. Unfortunately, where's uh -oh. the damage? Turns out it's from Leoric and Tyriel, as they're able to take down one member. They look for more. Trying to chase Gugas, who's been yep. so mobile, but he's been the one he can chew there. And it's a two for two. Leoric and Tyriel having none of this, even without their assassins. Now turning oh. into Gugas, just burns through it with the extra attack speed from Abatha. Now meme craft in danger, but he's staying alive. Right wing teleporting in, but Bourne is completely oob as they're moving in for Greymane. Can Crap. they get him the dream shot? Try to finish him off, but the shield from Abatha will save mana. And we talked about it during the draft tetra. Is Poland going to go for another melee assassin? Yeah. Guess what? Karazim, if Abatha hops on top of him, he can fulfill that role like a charm. And we actually saw the killing potential of a Karazim pick here. Very well executed. But the fight is not over just yet. Can Gugas interrupt Nunia from capturing the second tribute? In the meantime, Abathur, of course, can use his body yeah. and his head to soak two lanes at the same time. Ariel's not here with this. He thinks his team can either do it or they are giving up on it. Either way, they are delaying, but like I said, the longer Poland delays this, the more yep. XP advantage they will get from this with Abathur. But Abathur right now is joining with the team as they focus on Nunia and take him out immediately. See, those kills can happen right now because there's no Emerald Wind available for yeah, Primary Kills. Lucas, in the meantime, needs to be careful. The Drain Hope is enough to get him out of the way. Tribute is taken by Poland, so it is a kill for a tribute here. As you in trouble, Terry well, will found still. him. Yeah, and Bourne is, is gonna uh, chase him down. In a rough position, a new move. Oh. Oh. The dash target is it enough? Here's the Drain. We've seen it get one kill already, but beautiful. The dash. I mean, that was just a pleasure to behold right there. The positioning from Zadun, they were clearly communicating, hey, do you still have a dash ready? Okay, I'm gonna position myself as far away as I can to give you the most ground covered with that Radiant Dash. Beautiful escape here by Team Poland, but I still want to highlight one thing. After level 10, right wing is never going to fall that easily again. The second vacation could be there to really save her life as well. And uh, while Poland is looking very strong right now, I think it would be foolish for them to underestimate the disengaged potential by Team Germany. Exactly. Germany were able to delay that for so long, and now they have their heroics available. So far, no surprises for either teams. Only versatility we could have here mm -hmm. would have been the seven-sided strike, maybe being a farm, but they're going aggressive. Crazy. So we know what they want as both teams begin to trade bosses, but Poland sticking significantly faster. I'm not sure if they're going to make it in time, though, because Germany does have pretty significant Emma damage in as well. well. They're still trying to maybe get there in time. Actually, hold that thought. 50% left on the boss, and Ubrick is going to be there for they sure. They have so much disengage. There's the route. On uh -oh. to Anoop, slowing him down. Anoop could dive. Sank is dropped. Yeah, you want to come on this? Give it a go. <laughs> but now Sank is down. Now it's a team fight. The throw bit is used. Emerald Wind to try and give them an escape room. They're just turning around. The corruption is dropped. Cocoon immediately goes to the backline as here comes the dragon. No fight. Twilight. And down goes Cool Dad. Seven sided. And the Twilight Dream grabbing two people. But Poland are pushing through. This is a two for one right now in favor of them as they push forward. Nudi is taken down. Only the tank is left. That's not enough damage. <laughs> no, barely survived. Wow. What a brawl, but you could really see how Poland basically capitalized on 
the overreaction, the panic yeah. reaction from the German team. As he said, sanctification was good, it secured them the boss, but then the Emerald Wind was used a little bit too early to my liking, and Gugus, he was not interrupted. The yeah. Cocoon also hitting on Malfurion, so that Twilight Dream was super late. And they never got horrified, the focus, because yeah. Gul'dan trying to be a bro, focused his life drain onto the Cocoon to try and get Malfurion out of it, but that's not enough healing to keep him alive from the Dragon Blade. That is a very good point, Tetra. I think with that Orify landing on two, three people at the same time. This could have been Germany's fight to win. And as it is right now, curse point in favor of Ugus and the Polish team. Now, all the defenses will have to be brought online for Team Germany. So many lanes are getting pushed yeah. in right now, especially the middle one. And Germany are having issues with XP. They didn't even get that top four. That would have been a lovely boost in XP. Yeah. Trying to get them towards that level 13 that Poland already holds. I also give, uh, gotta give major a major shout out to Wolves on that Abathur, by the way. Yes. It felt like the Genji copy did more work in that last team fight than uh, Gugus on the actual Genji because the resets also apply to the copy. And yeah. if you have those empowered abilities dealing 40% more damage than normal, yeah. you can wreak absolute havoc in the back line. And uh, we haven't actually talked about it that much, but Genji's build is a little bit different here. Not going for the usual just swift strike build, started off with Agile Dismount, went into the Shuriken Mastery at level 4, and then the Cyber Shield. So going for a Shuriken slash sustain build. Okay, in the meantime, Terriel gets absolutely yeah. popped here. Is and Genji clone. I wonder if Poland was aware of the fact that Sanctification was not ready just yet, because it was so clutch. Yeah. Had he had it a now in a couple of seconds later, he could have survived, maybe. Exactly. He could have been potentially even turned that Turning out. around, yeah. But he's dead. His tank is now up, so it's available for the next fight. But in the meantime, that's level 15 on the way for Poland, as Germany just hit level 30. All right, and looks like Poland is not done just yet. Diving oh over the God. wall like a pain train. Next stop, Gul'dan in the cocoon. We see Brain here being a bro, popping the cocoon and positioning himself with that ominous rape to give his team a chance to escape. I'm just amazed at the execution cleanness by Poland. They started that mercenary camp, but the moment they saw Team Germany defend over the wall, whoop, 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 using all of their wall jumping abilities and collapsing onto a oblivious Malfurion. Exactly. Really amazing play, and this is the joy of Poland. Germany's comp works when they're grouped. When they're busy when defending no three chaos. different lanes, then Ger Poland's comp is beautiful for getting those kills because you need all of those abilities on the side of Germany to have a chance of winning. Definitely true. And when they have so many abilities, Team Germany, that, is that, over that could potentially overlap, it puts so much psychological pressure onto them. Am I supposed to use Sanctification right now, or do I want to save it if I use it now? Is Am I going to feel the repercussions later on? So there is a lot of weight and a lot of you know respect here for Team Germany of holding their abilities when it's needed to and using them when it's absolutely mandatory. As we see a Nubarak once again, positioning aggressively. Oh. He hit by a tower, he wants duty though. This is just kind that of- could buy a lot of time though. That if could, he lands yep. the stun, then that is just a dead bright. I'm not so sure. The rest of the team though. Oh, goodbye. Oh my God. And the rest of the team's like, yeah, no, and decide to pull back to their towers. Okay, so that was a very nice kill. However, if that ice block had been landing, yeah. yeah. That was, a, that was what, once again, a tick perfect engage there. Like yep. we said, if they land the stun, Brightwing is gone. If not, there's Emerald Wind, the, uh, the Ice Block. There's all of Brightwing's allies moving in. That could have been a turnaround for Poland, executing to perfection. Yeah, they're basically roaming the map like sharks in the water. Wherever a German player shows himself, the sharks are going to pop up and collapse on them. Why don't we have a, a Nubarak shark skin. Yeah, that would be pretty cool, eh? Don't we have that? He's like he's swimming through the ground as is. It'd be great. And little baby sharks instead of the beetles. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually adorable. I really want to. Even crabs just yeah. think of the ocean theme. <laughs> as we do see Germany try to take control over a tribute area, they do have a tribute, so this will move them one step closer to a curse. All heroic abilities are ready except for the copy on Wolves here for Abathur. In the meantime, we see Gugus trying to go for a surround. <laughs> oh and God. those seven sided strikes, ladies and gentlemen, are taking the cake home. And the cocoon stack is dropped, so the person in the cocoon is able to escape. The corruption is dropped, but guess what? All five members of Poland are still here, and you just used one of your biggest disengaged tools. Yeah. And the new moves in, Icebox is used, and the Emerald Wind, Twilight Dream, though, they get one, but Genji is dropping the Dragon Blade, shredding through the members here, but we see the members of Poland dropping Bright Brightwing, 
killing mana. Wow. Brain coming back as well from the dead. Mortar Brain once again becoming the only two left as we see Brain. He's kind of alone now, but that was a three for technically five, but the Auric is back. Yeah, and the copy is still reigning supreme. Look at the ominous wraith, though, and the yeah. healing coming in from level one town. Leoric refuses to die, but the oh, copy is die. gone right now. Where's the Abathur head? Even the Black King. Oh. But the Abathur coming in for the save there at that wow. final shot. The dude will take the tribute for his team. And the good thing is, Karazim will be back immediately. Uh, Abathur could actually reinforce this top lane with those mercenaries already yeah. knocking at the front door. But what I was in originally trying to say is, Karazim is back. And combined with Abathur and the Karazim, Anubra could easily go for their boss potentially. Started off mm -hmm. clearly great fast. Doing. And Leoric is exactly scouting that. Yep, Ghost Scout coming in yep. here. Seeing that there is currently nothing going on. And it is potentially, mm. if Zadun did see that Wraith, which he likely did, then this could be the dissuading tool, because guess what? Germany's back. What were we saying earlier? Who has boss control? Who's Riding got holy gun. ground? Who has holy ground? Tyriel does. They have the tools they need. Who is going to force everyone off the point? Gul'dan is, because they have everyone back. And instead, we see the scout from Poland. Yep. They knew that it was a threat to do their boss, and Germany might know that the mind games could have been real. But instead, Germany, yeah, they just don't want to die. So they have not started their own boss. So instead, Poland oh. starts. That is so cool here. The Polish team is showing big guts and going for that top boss. In the meantime, though, the German team gave their position away after yep. capturing the Siege Shine camp. Uh, they are going to get a tribute out of this, but this will not be a cursed tribute. And nope. top has already been weakened. The front wall just died to minions here. As we see Poland using maximum ability to try and make it down here. Okay. But, oh my god, this is risky. This is very they risky. They have the tools. They get the tribute. Abathur sees this thanks to his mind popping onto Nunia. They see everything that is happening here. They dodge the boss stun, but they're slightly split. They need to move in for the sanctification to have Wolf's any copy. chance of this. There is the holy ground. And we see Leoric with some great delay tools. There's the sack as the boss goes down here. They're trying to cap it. Here's the Emerald win. Boss oh. the boss is taken. But here is the Dragon Blade. Everyone's going to jump in a Twilight Dream. It's good for the turnaround here. Genji is still oh alive. Oh my god! Protected by the oh. way. He gets all the reset. And we see Brain take it down. The Auric is back, but he goes down too. And it is a full team wipe by Team Poland. Gugus have my unborn babies. That deflect in the last second was absolutely the fact, the key fact that turned around this entire fight. Actually, I was super risky for the Polish team to go yeah. in there because so many disengage tools, so many boss control they tools available. They went so low. They went so low in that push. But guess what's also about to go low? It's the core of Germany as Poland will take game number three and take a 2-1 lead. I can't believe the turn, the momentum, the speed that Gugus had in that team fight, really keeping himself alive for that very short time window, giving him the reset, allowing Abathur to jump on top of him, protect, uh, protecting him even more. I just don't know what to say. That was hands down the best Genji performance I've seen at the Nexus game. Exactly, and that was so close. Well, that was the second the silence from Twilight Dream ended. That fight could have easily gone the other way, but it's those little tiny plays from players like the Genji here that they were able to win the game with. We spoke about how much value uh, stuff like Emerald Wind and Twilight Dream would have, and they did. They had so much value, but Poland had even more value with that insane <laughs> dive on one person. That one person is dead before you even read who it was. Yeah, that person was basically already dead before the person even knew it. Like, Poland had spoken the death sentence, yeah. and it came true. We also, very quickly, before your replays here, we saw once again, for the second time in that last team fight, a potential early sanctification. They dropped it to guarantee the boss, but then it's not available for the Dragon Blade, and it's not available for the engage. Now, I'm glad you mentioned sanctification being dropped too early, because <laughs> that is also what happens in my first replay. Ooh. So as we get into it here, we see sanctifications used almost instantly, and this is to secure the boss but they have no plan to get out and they have no sank, so they cannot team fight now. So the uh, team fight is gonna start off. Emerald Wind's used as well just to disengage. Huge value from Gul'dan. Now, Cocoon goes down onto Malfurion. Gul'dan instantly gets blown up as they all dive in. But they know that Malfurion's coming out of Cocoon and they still stay so aggressive with the Anub and the Greymane. And that cost Anub his life, very almost cost mana his life, but still, they follow up after. Wolves on this Abathur clone getting so much value as well. Mana 
gets super low to this Leoic. He knows he has to kill the Leoic to survive. And look at that HP. <laughs> Just look at that wow. HP. That is single digit. If single ever I digit HP. It. Um, and that is the first big team fight which uh, Poland are able to take and start to snowball into that victory. All right, I can't wait to see more bakery because there were so many good team battles, team fights going on. What else have you got for us? So my final replay here is the absolute insane thing that happened at the second boss fight. So as we get into it, we're going to see Sanctification again used very early, just like Tetsu was saying. We roll it forward. We see they all stack up and they just want the boss. That's what they know they need the boss right now. So they stack up. They all get inside of sanctification. It's far too early. Brain takes tons of damage. Wolves on the Abacar gets no value. Genzi goes in. He, they all get Twilight Dreamed. He gets so low. Now keep watching Genzi. So low. Literally single digit HP. Oh. He gets the protect. Gets the dash. Reset. Comes back in and then dashes again. Oh. Back down. You can even see the last second swing by Braid there. He thought he could get it, but Genji just leapt over the wall to freedom. Protected by the way, guys. Genji, good hero. Now, Fantastic in, in, all, of, in all this mayhem, I want to talk about a hero that we have mentioned during the replays, Karzim. Strong healing when everybody is clumped up around him, isn't it? Exactly, and that was the comp. The Poland were running. It worked really well. Yeah, definitely. Karzim, we spoke about like, early in the tournament how strong that hero was. And Zuf again showing he knows how to play that hero and he knows how to be aggressive on that hero. Yeah, we basically mentioned it. Is Poland going to go for another melee assassin maybe? And uh, they kind of did because <laughs> I think during that early tribute moment, we could really see the full power, the full melee power of Karzi if had it by the Abathur on top of it. But we're still sh being shown over and over again that Germany are willing to surprise us. So many of those fights could have gone the other way if something went a little bit different. This is far from a done series. We still have one more win for Poland to go through and two, only two more for Germany. And we are about to run out of standard maps. I'm actually going to say that no other team other than the Polish one could have probably executed this composition that well. It was really their game to win and they did so flawlessly. Now, ladies and gentlemen, next battleground is going to be unveiled very soon. What are you, what are your guesses? Faded me there. I thought 